know a lot of people will say, well, you know, my dog hates to be in the crate. Well, we're going to get to that in a second. But the reason why they hate being in the crate is because you just didn't do it right. You didn't associate it right. Or you gave up too soon. Uh, most of the time, it's, it's maybe a combination of the two. But, you know, the crate is a great tool because what I call it, I call it a calming box. Because when they go in their crates, the purpose of them being in their crates is exclusively to be what? Calm. When you first start crate training, the reason why most of the time the dog associates a crate in a negative way, it's because you use it as punishment, right? The other reason why is because of the fact that you never um, associate anchor calmness with the crate, right? So here's just a couple of ideas, just a couple of tidbits that I use and I've used with my own clients, but especially with Socks and Pepper and their crates. Listen, their crates are phenomenal. They're, they're, they're like little, little New York city apartments for these guys. You know, they got their little memory foam beds in there. You know, they got, um, blankets. So they like to snuggle in there. They create like little pillow socks, create like, creates like a little pillow out of, he likes, he's like a person. He sleeps like on a pillow, even on the bed. He just sleeps on a pillow. He likes his head propped up. Uh, Pepper likes to dig in. She's part dachshund. So she likes to like, you know, dig herself under the blanket and stuff. So they got blankets in there, memory foam beds. Those mattresses are hardcore. Awesome. So I was, I should go. I should go sleep in there sometimes. Anyway. So, so the crates, they have a positive association with their crates. And again, I only use them now when I'm not home, when I'm, when nobody's home, but, um, that I used to use them throughout the day, but you know, if you got to know, if you want to know more about crate training, which we'll, we'll, we could talk to them more extensively right now, I just want to explain how the crate associates with the getting rid of the excitement factor. So again, when you're introducing a dog to your, to a crate, the most important thing that you have to do is not to number one, use food. Don't use, again, the bribery system is not smart, you know, because again, if you're bringing out treats and you're bringing out food, what state of mind are you triggering? Yes. If you said excitement, you've been paying attention. If you haven't, drop it the Lord, get real speed, get to have an energy drink or something, slap yourself in the face, wake up. Yes. You're triggering excitement because food makes them excited. So you want to use the treat as a reward for going in the crate. And my point of it is you don't want to, you don't want to lure them in with a treat. Okay. You don't want to throw a treat in there and then look, dog runs in and you close the door. That's called a trap. Okay. So now you're trapping, you're bringing a dog in the crate with an excited mindset. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to bark. They're going to destroy. They're going to like rip the bed apart because of the fact that they never went in calmly. Okay. So the most important thing when you're bringing a dog into a crate is what I call 50, 50 approach. Meaning your job is to give their, their give them direction. Their job is to follow that, those directions. So if you're bringing your dog into the crate, the first couple of times to teach them what you do is you bring them to the crate. You could put their front paws in the crate. If you'd like, give them a little nudge and let them walk in. Remember if you put the dog into the crate, the brain never did anything. The dog never did anything. You want to explain to the dog physically and energy wise, your energy communicates your words. Stop yapping. Stop. Come on, let's go. Let's go get in there. Come on. Let's go. Come on, get in there, get in there. Because again, if you go into that mode where you're doing that much talking, what energy are you in? And if you said excitement, you got that right. Ding, ding, ding. That's the point. So now you're spiking up the excitement because you're excited. So now the crate equals excitement. Fasenso. Oh, so now when you are getting your dog in the crate, the other, and you're struggling with it, maybe they're backing up, maybe they're fighting you or whatever. Remember it's 50, 50, you give direction. And at first it's going to be a little more difficult because your dog's little, you know, they're not understanding if they're puppies, it's going to be a little bit easier. If they're older dogs, maybe, you know, you got your, your job is to teach, right? Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was a clip taken from an upcoming episode of our podcast, Barking for Balance, which premieres every Thursday. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss out. It's really cool. You could also listen to the podcast on all major platforms. Links are, are down below in the description. Make sure you also follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. Links also down below for all content that we don't post on YouTube.